Greg from Ardmore, Tennessee, hit me and said, hey, what do you think the impact of Ryan Grubb leaving has on Alabama? I think it'll be fine, but looking for your wonderful wisdom. Well, Ryan Grubb was the offensive coordinator for 10 minutes, maybe. And then he took the Seahawks OC position. Scott Huff was going to be the offensive line coach at Alabama. He also went to Seattle. It looks like, according to Matt Zenitz, it looks like it's going to be Nick Sheridan who just elevates from tight ends coach to offensive coordinator. He's been a coordinator once upon a time before under Kalen DeBoer. I don't really care. Kalen DeBoer is just going to call the plays this year because that's what's about to happen in Alabama. He's done it before. It's his system. I'm very interested because we hadn't really seen Grubb do it without Kalen DeBoer. So not that I'm glued to Seattle Seahawks football on Sunday afternoon, but I'll be interested to see him without alignment next to Kalen DeBoer for the first time. I actually think Huff is the bigger loss. That guy had the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line this past year, and I uh, don't think it's lost on anyone watching this show how much that Alabama offensive line struggled. That was going to be a big upgrade for them. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Bama lose Ryan Grubb, and while I had respect for the guy and still do, Bama losing Ryan Grubb, I think it's not even as big a deal as him losing Scott Huff. I mean, look, no one freaked out, for example, when Kirby lost Dan Lanning. You wouldn't freak out if he lost Glenn Schumann. You wouldn't freak out if he lost Will Muschamp. Why? Because it's Kirby's defense. You don't freak out when he loses guys on his side of the ball. Did you freak out when Josh Heupel lost Golish to USF? These are good coaches. But you don't freak out when they lose them because you know they possess the ability to call that side of the ball themselves. It's what they've done their whole life. I don't care if he loses Grubb. Scott Huff, I kind of care if he lost. And he lost Scott Huff. And again... I'm not the one sitting here grading staffs in February. Uh, I think it is well within our right to just take a little while and see how it looks this year. Could these things matter? They could matter a great deal. Could we also see a staff that gels and is great at Alabama in their first year and hits the over nine and a half wins? Sure, we could. Could they win seven games? Sure, they could. Like all of those things are on the table. Can we just get to spring ball? Can we? Most, most folks out there hating on Bama staff can't even name Bama staff. So could we just get to spring ball? That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Is my opinion changed on this front? Absolutely not. I think it's going to end up in time being one of the best staffs in the SEC. Best staffs in college football. They'll be okay. That doesn't mean, that is not tantamount to me guaranteeing anything in year one. Trust fund syndrome. Got to knock that trust fund syndrome. You're not entitled to 11 and a half wins per year. Okay, I know you guys have been used to that. 28-year-old Bama bro, bro, you're used to that. That's not the way the real world works. There could be a scenario where Kalen DeBoer is the right hire and wins eight games this year. Like that could happen. Which brings me back to my question I asked a little while ago. What do you think is realistic to expect from them? I've got immense amounts of respect for Kalen DeBoer, long term. Uh, and it's not like they're going to have a poverty roster this year. They'll be capable of winning every game they play this year. It's just the margins are going to be a whole lot smaller. And uh, there's a lot of newness to be experienced by everyone. So what's realistic? And I'm asking you that, and I'm moving on. Because it's an open-ended question that I would like for us not to just rush to answer.